Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how I made the impossible possible. I will modify the firmware of the class pad 2 to be able to run games like Tetris. Until now, playing games on this calculator was considered completely impossible. The class pad 2, also known as the FXCP400, is a modern graphics calculator from Casio, which was released in 2013 and is the successor of the class pad 300 and 330. Its software and processor is similar to the Casio Prism. There are only two differences, one good and one bad change. The good change is the addition of the touchscreen, which makes the calculator more intuitive to use. But there was also a bad change. The ability to execute add-in programs was completely removed. Well, you can write programs in BASIC, but they run very slow. Games are almost impossible. In the Cassiopeia forum, there is a version of Space Invaders called CP Invaders. But due to the limitations, it is almost unplayable. I think I don't need to say that a Minesweeper clone takes multiple minutes just to draw the board and initialize the game. But now to the topic. I modified the firmware to be able to write my own games in assembly. In this video I will show you how this was done and how you can do this with your own calculator. But first this is based on an article by the 6P4C I read around one and a half years back. I will link his original article in the video description. Initially I recreated his project to show that it is possible to run games on this calculator. But when this was proven, I had Tetris on my calculator. My goal was not to play in school, but that is what ended up happening. <laughs> I played so much that I completely forgot to make a video about this. So this is very late, but nobody else made the video. Am I the second person who did a modification like this to the calculator? So where do we begin? Maybe with the first step. How can we modify the firmware? Well, there's a program which I call the official Casio updater, which installs the firmware from a Windows computer to the calculator. This is what the 6P4C described in his article, which is of course linked in the description below. The updater puts three DLL files into the temp directory. One of them is osupdate.dll.dll. This one does the updating of the calculator. If we look at the included resources, there are two RC data sections with seemingly random data. The resource 3070 is the firmware compressed as a gzip file. Well, almost. There are 11 bytes missing, 10 at the beginning and 1 at position hex 3000. I'm adding this by hand, but I will show you a much easier version later in this video. We can unzip this and we get the raw binary of the firmware. As we know, the class by 2 has an SH4 processor like the Prism. If we know where what section of the firmware is, we can modify this and make the calculator do what we want. Here you can see how I wrote my own program, which I called the loader, which loads programs like games and executes them. This is the loader 2B. I wrote a version 4, which had a menu system, but there were multiple bugs, so I went back to version 2. So I compiled this and put this into the firmware binary. I did all the steps in reverse and had a OS update DLL mod.dll. Well, the byte at 3000 that was removed was different, so I had to change that in the code. Now the new DLL file contains this modification. You can execute programs inside a DLL with the Windows program run dll32. So let's execute OS update from our new DLL file. This launches the updater with our modified firmware. The calculator blocks updates if it already has the newest firmware. But we can enter an emergency update mode by holding the exp key, the exponent key and the clear key simultaneously and pressing reset at the back with a pen. Do I have to mention that such an update can erase user data when you go from one version to another? Now we can start the update. Sometimes the program fails to load the text. Just hit OK on all error messages and click on OK in the updater. The update will work just the same. This update will take around 8 minutes. And when the update is finished, the calculator should work as normal with the modification we made. I will show you a much easier process where you don't need any programming knowledge later in this video. Here I installed the loader 2B and I will show you how you can install games and other programs for this loader. 
This is the game I already showed you at the beginning. I compiled it, now I have this file. You could type this byte by byte into the calculator, for example in a text file. But there is a program for the older calculator that can convert text files into old calculator backup files. The classpad manager can read these files. I misplaced my license key, so this is the 30 day trial version. You cannot reinstall it after the 30 days. From the classpad manager you can export it as an XCP file which you can load onto your calculator and importing it. We can see these files in the program menu because they are saved as text files. I suggest putting all assembly programs in one separate folder. As I already said, the loader 2 does not have a selection menu, so we can only have one program which it can find. The first line in our text file is the text exec000. You have to change this to exec002 for the loader to find it. So change this only at one program you want to start. Leave all others at 000. The text exec003 will be used for the loader 3 and 4 if I could bother to work on that. After the exec002 there is a program in hexadecimal numbers. When I don't have a computer nearby I write programs directly in hex. You can find more about that in the documentation of my loader. Enough rambling, let's start the game. This version of the modification always enables the button in the language menu. So first, save everything and turn the calculator off and on again. Now we can start the loader. Go to settings, language and click on the load program button. Because this button is also available in exam mode, I would use the original firmware for exams in school. As you've seen, the loader started and loaded our game. Now we can play this game. Now, if I want to go back to the normal operating system, we have three options. First option is simply closing the program. If the programmer was smart, you can press shift and clear at the same time. But if he was stupid, or if the program crashes, this doesn't work. In this case, just press the reset button on the back. Don't worry, this will not delete anything at all. It will just reboot the calculator. If you do not have a pen, there is an option 3. Just take out the batteries, this always works. Great, now you know how I can play games on my calculator. But do you know how you can do this as well? I've done all the work, so you don't have to do this yourself. Well, most of the final firmware is the firmware from Casio, which I'm not allowed to distribute. But I can give you all the programs that do most of the modifying work for you. The code you can see right now is a program that automates all these tasks. Even I use this program. The whole modification with this tool takes about 10 minutes, including the update itself. Doing this by hand takes maybe half an hour. Well, with trial and error, maybe a few days or nights, depending on when you work. <laughs> I call this program snail2020.exe. You can download it from the video description below. It will tell you what it needs. Download this program from the link in the video description. I will distribute it in a zip file like this. Open the zip file and place the folder snail2020 onto the desktop. It has to be on the desktop because I was lazy while programming. Now you can open this folder. There's just this program. Maybe you will get the Tetris and an example with it. But the most important thing is the program. So let's start this program. First it instructs us on downloading two other programs. One is Resource Hacker. The link will be in the description of this video. Go to the download website, scroll down, read the license and click on EXE install and install this. This is one part of the magic. My program also uses Zlib for compression. But you don't need to download this because this is included. The next thing we need to download is the official updater. The link is also in the description. Click on a country, for example Germany. Click on download. Click on CAS graphing models, accept the license agreement, and the first thing is the update for our FXCP400. We need version 2.1.6 for Windows. My program instructs you to open the updater, but don't connect the calculator yet. So click on yes, next, read the license and click accept, click next and click install. Don't click anything in the new window, just go back to my program. In my program, hit the enter key on the keyboard. You don't need to read what it says. I already said this in this video. Hit enter every time it asks you to. If it says error, something went wrong. 
when there is this message in the window, my program is done. Now you can close the updater window. The last time you press enter, another updater window opens. This time it is a modified version. Now you can do the update. Take your calculator and start the update mode. Do not follow the instructions in the program. Do it how I show it here. Press and hold the X key. Press and hold the little head or exponent key. And press and hold the clear key. The calculator will probably turn on now, but that's not important. Turn it around without taking the fingers off the keys and short press the reset button with a pen. Keep the front buttons held down until you see the OS error screen. This might look scary, but don't worry, there is no real error. If you don't have a pen on hand, you can remove a battery, hold the keys with one hand and insert the battery with the other hand. But you will probably have a pen on hand. Now the most important step. Connect the calculator to the computer with a mini USB cable and press OK on the updater. This update will take around 8 minutes. You can use this time to subscribe to my channel, ring that bell and write a comment. Tell me if you would like more English videos or more German videos. The class pet 2 is very popular in France, but my French is very bad. <laughs> So back to our calculator. Eight minutes later the updater is done and we get asked about the language. If you did the same update as me, you can already see the loader button in the language menu. Don't click on it yet. If you accidentally do so, it will crash and you can restart it with the reset button. Or with the battery trick if you don't have a pen. Now we have the loader, but we haven't any programs to load. If you have a program in hex as an XCP file, this is pretty easy. Turn on the calculator, connect it back to the PC, wait a second and tap on USB storage. On the computer, open the calculator and copy the file to the storage. Click unmount or eject or remove media safely before you disconnect the calculator. This ensures that the file is fully copied before you pull out the cable. The last step is to import this program into the calculator's memory. If you want, you can create a new folder for the programs and put them all in this folder but you can also put everything in the main folder. To import the file, go to the menu, system, view storage and import, select and select the file you wish to import. Click import, select the folder where you want the file to be, either main or the folder you created, and click OK. Now you can go into the app program. Select the folder where you put the file, either in main or in my case programs. You can edit the file with this button. If you have multiple programs, you can only have the line xx002 in one of your programs. In all other programs, change this line to something different, for example xx000. You can save changes with this button. Now, go to the main menu and turn the calculator off and on again. This makes the system write everything to the internal storage, so nothing is lost when a program gets executed. Now, the one step you need to do to start a program is to go to settings, language and click on the load button. The program will now start. When you are bored of Tetris, just press shift and clear simultaneously or reset the calculator. If you want to start the program again, you just need to go to settings, language and press the load button again. But if you want another program, just go to program, select the file, edit, remove the 002, go to the program you want to execute and add the 002. After turning the calc off and on, you can click the button in the language menu to start the program that now contains the xx002. There's one last thing I need to add. With this mod I showed here, you can even access the loader during an exam. If you would like to leave the exam mode intact, you can remove this line in the file mod.txt. Run the snail2020.exe again and install this other modification. Now this button in the language menu is gone. If you want to load a program without this button, you have to go to the settings, turn the calculator off, hold exp equals and clear until you see this screen and then press left and Z simultaneously. In this menu press 3, press the back key and you should be back in the settings. Go directly into the language menu and now you have the load button again, which you can press to load the program. This version is a mod I prefer, even though it is more complicated to start the loader this way. You get automatically reminded to turn off the calculator before starting the loader and the exam mode does not get modified in any way. 
I hope you learned something in this video. Have fun while playing Tetris on your calculator. All the links are in the description. And while you are in the description, you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. A special thanks to the 6P4C. Without his article, this wouldn't be possible. Another thank you to the Casio Prism Wiki, who has a lot of information on this very similar calculator. That was everything for this video. I hope you liked it. And until next time.